Hello and welcome to financialexpress.com. I am Sushmita Panda. Tuberculosis or TB is an infectious bacterial disease which most commonly affects the lungs. According to WHO, India has the highest burden of TB with two deaths occurring every three minutes. To talk more about this today, uh, to talk more about this, today we have with us Dr. Sarabji Chadda, Finance Regional Technical Director of its Southeast Asia and India. Dr. Chadda, welcome to financialexpress.com. Hi, uh, Dr. Chattar, if you could, let, uh, let's start with what is tuberculosis so that our viewers can know how this uh, disease occurs. So, Sushmita, tuberculosis is an infective disease. It is caused by a bacteria called Mycobacterium TB. And if you look at, you know, its history, it's been there for as long as my, mankind has been there. So, we've got evidence of tuberculosis affecting even the mummies in the Egyptian uh, pyramids, right? So they detected that even their spines and other organs were affected. So it's it's been there for that long. Unfortunately, you know, it still continues to be a major public health problem, even in today's world. So all the low socioeconomic and low middle income countries are greatly affected. And India holds the highest TB burden in the world, you know, it contributes to almost 25% of all uh, cases of TB which occur globally every year. Uh, just to give you a little more information on TB, you know, it can affect any organ in the body, but most commonly it affects the lungs. And that is where, you know, that is how it transmits itself. Dr. Shatta, could you please uh, tell us more about what is silent TB and how it is affecting the Indian population? So, Sushmita, before that, you know, we need to understand that TB actually has a, is, it's a spectrum. It is not just one condition. So, you start with what is known as TB infection, which you call as silent TB. Now, TB infection is that you have in contact and you, you know, TB bacteria has now entered your body, but they have not grown to that extent that they are causing a disease. They are just lying dormant within your body. That is called as TB infection. The difference is that a patient or a person who has TB infection will have no symptoms. He is hale and hearty. His appetite is good. He has no cough. He has no other symptom. But as and when there is an opportunity for the TB bacteria to grow, for example, you know, your immune status goes down because of poor nutrition, because of diabetes, because of smoking, because of alcoholism, then these TB bacteria will start growing and then they cause a disease in which you have typical symptoms like cough, blood and sputum, fever, loss of appetite and so on. The, and, you know, this TB infection is normally seen in close contacts of TB patients. So, for example, you know, those who are living within the same household, they work with the, this person in the same premises, or they are in close contact with that person, right? The good news is that we now have diagnostic and treatment modalities for TB infection as well. So you can now diagnose someone with TB infection using a test called as IGRA, which is a blood test, or and now we have a latest test, which is called as the Psi TB test, which is a skin test. And if you are diagnosed with TB infection, then we also have a treatment available. So earlier, you know, we used to give a drug for six months every day. But now we have a extremely effective and a much shorter treatment regimen, which we call as 3HP. So it has two drugs, INH and Rifapentin, which is given on a weekly basis, not even daily. Weekly basis, 12 doses, which means three months. And you are cured of. The TB infection. So then your chances of actually developing TB disease reduces significantly. Uh, in the uh, recent years, we have advanced a lot medically, technology wise, and we have all, all we have also advanced diagnostics. How we diagnose, how we are diagnosing the diseases. Uh, as you mentioned, like a uh, few of the diagnostic way. Uh, modules of TB. Could you please also, you know, like, uh, what are the status of uh, latest diagnostic techniques that are available in the market? And how many of these advanced techniques are available in India? 
So I'll take you, you know, maybe a couple of decades back. You know, I've been associated with TB for almost 20 years now. So when, you know, when I as a young doctor, you know, was treating TB patients about 20 years back, we had very minimal diagnostic modalities. You know, we we, we were relying on sputum smear microscopy. So sputum is taken, a smear is made, and it is observed by a lab technician under a microscope. The sensitivity of a smear microscope is less than 50%, which means, you know, if we if we have 100 TB patients, this test will diagnose only 50% of them. The rest 50% will be diagnosed as negative. This was then, you know, in about 2010, we came, you know, a, there was a revolution when we had what is called as gene expert or a cartridge-based nuclear nucleic acid amplification system. Now, this test actually changed the landscape of TB diagnostics for a simple reason, you know, that this test had a very high sensitivity, almost like 80, 90 percent, which means it could diagnose out of 100 cases, 90 cases. Plus, it also told you about the drug resistance. So what is important in TB is that, you know, the patient should be susceptible to the drugs that we give. If the patient is susceptible then you know that regimen is going to work. But if the patient is resistant to the key drugs like rifampicin, INH, then the regimen that we are giving will not work. Right? That is what drug-resistant TB is. Now, this particular test, the CBNAT or the gene expert test, would actually tell you that the patient has TB and whether that patient is resistant to rifampicin or not. So you got both this information in a matter of two hours. After that, you know, we had TrueNAT, which is a local indigenous test, which was developed by a company based in Bangalore, Malbiotechnologies, which similar, quite similar to Gene Expert, could also diagnose both TB and drug resistant TB within the same time frame at a much lower cost. In India, we currently have over 1,000 Gene Expert machines or CBNAT machines. And we have almost three to 4,000 TrueNAT machines, which are now being used. And slowly, we are replacing all the smear microscopy with TrueNATs. If we go to a higher level, right, because, you know, TB, we, we cannot diagnose uh, uh, drug resistance. There are about 12 different drugs which we use in TB. Not all of them can be diagnosed using a TrueNAT or a CBNAT. So we have what is called as a liquid culture and drug sensitivity system. These are like high-end, state-of-the-art equipment, which are available uh, across 80 labs, which FIND has supported, you know, uh, in, in establishing across the country. And here, we have state-of-the-art facilities to diagnose drug resistant to almost 12 drugs. These, of course, take time because, you know, you have to grow the bacteria first and then test them for these drugs. So this normally takes about five to six weeks as compared to CBNAT and TrueNAT, which gives you the result in two weeks. But then these tests are required only in those patients where you are suspecting that the patient may be resistant to more than one. Now, you know, we are actually having newer tests which are coming in. For example, you know, you can you might be able to diagnose TB using urine, what we call as the urine lamp test, which is currently under evaluation. And then there are several other diagnostic tests in the pipeline, which are currently being validated. So in the next four or five years, you know, we will have a huge number of tests which will be available. But having said that, you know, the India's TB program has actually taken a very proactive approach and it is one of the leading programs in the world which has actually used these molecular tests, you know, the CBNAT and TrueNAT, to such a large extent. Like I said, you know, over a thousand CBNATs and over nearly 5,000 uh, TrueNATs are currently available. Um, if you talked about India's TV program, in April this year, if I'm not wrong, India announced that they will be developing their own model to record the incidence of TV. Uh, so, according to you, how this can help us in addressing our own TB problem? And could you please also highlight if there is any challenges with this model? 
so this is again you know a, a landmark uh, which the india tv program has uh, made and this was announced on the last world tv day on 24th march 2023 uh sushmita we need to understand you know that tb is a is a dynamic disease right we do not have uniformity across geographies across populations the advantage of this mathematical modeling is that it uses the country's own data you know in terms of notifications in terms of death rates in terms of treatment regimens in terms of age sex and other vulnerabilities like i said you know if the patient has diabetes if the patient is is a smoker and together you know it creates a model and says that okay this is you know in this patient this could be an outcome secondly it also identifies hot spots so for example you know you take a district in up where you have the most notifications and you have poor outcomes which means that the transmission is more in this areas as compared to andaman nicobar you know or lakshadweep where the incidence of tb is much lower the notifications are much lower cure rates are very high it assimilates all this information and gives you a model which tells you okay how are we doing in different areas or different states different districts in the country how can we plan our tb strategies for a particular district or a particular state how much of resource allocation is required if we are implementing a new intervention what is its impact right all these things can be done by this model till now you know we were heavily relying on doing disease prevalence surveys drug resistance surveys mortality surveys to tell us you know how we are progressing in terms of addressing the tb burden but these are very very resource intensive exercises and they cannot be done every year but it requires millions of dollars to do these surveys this model is actually a good proxy for all these surveys using country's own data and coming up with more information so that you know you can plan your strategies the challenge is that the reporting or the recording and reporting should be accurate so it cannot be that you know one state is doing accurate reporting the other is putting in data which is in inaccurate because you know what goes in is what comes out right if you feed in correct information you get good uh, conclusive uh, evidence but if you feed in junk naturally you know that data will not be used so that is a limitation but i think with training with supervision and monitoring in the years to come this mathematical modeling uh, you know technique will actually be very very helpful for india to monitor its progress and achieve tb elimination as well uh dr chadda what exactly as you in the beginning of our conversation you mentioned that tb bacteria has been there since the beginning of mankind what exactly makes this bacteria so resistant that we have to you know catch it that drug resistant tb is such a major uh, issue within the issue of tb what exactly is the reason for that so sushmita mycobacterium tuberculosis is a very intelligent organism i must say right uh i i will just tell you you know a few features it is one of those organisms where a single drug is not effective so you know you have all of us keep getting you know infections sore throats pneumonias what do we normally take we just take one single antibiotic for 6 7 days it kills all the bacteria we become all right in case of mycobacterium tuberculosis it's a it's a complex organism and as a result you know we have to use multiple drugs so the minimum number of drugs that we use in any treatment regimen for tb is four to begin with for two months and then you know we reduce it to two why because if we use a single drug this intelligent organism quickly develops resistance and it actually outwits that drug and that drug is no no longer useful the second thing is that you know it adapts to the environment very well like i said you know it is a it is not just one single disease it's actually a spectrum so it enters your body it will lie there in your lungs or any other part of the body for for a long time dormant 
and as soon as it gets the right environment you know like the immune status of the patient is low then it starts multiplying and it has the advantage because now the body's resistance mechanisms cannot fight third so many new drugs have come it has been able to develop resistance to almost all the drugs and as a result you know and it it's not just about the bacteria i would say a lot of it is man made resistance like i said you know if patients do take doses irregularly or if they do not complete their treatment or they do not take the right doses so for example you know a patient is told that you have to take these four tablets every day he takes only two no no this i will not take the orange capsule because it causes uh, you know so much of side effects so i will not take this as a result of these practices the organism develops resistance so all these factors together have actually led to drug resistance uh in india dr sada we have you know the out of pocket expenditure for any sort of disease is extremely high and we have a certain kind of challenges like we have different set of facilities available in the public sector we have different set of facilities available in the private sector with respect to uh, tb and its treatment where do we stand with respect to its financial burden and accessibility to all sorts of advanced uh, treatment options So, Sushmita, that's a very good question. Even today, you know, a lot of patients—I would say a significant proportion of patients—actually incur a lot of out-of-pocket expenditure, and that too when the government actually is providing free diagnostics and treatment. So, one reason is that you know patients are not satisfied with the government health services, right? And these vary across states. so some states have very good health services but because you know uh, india has such high population the health system is not able to cater or provide quality services to all the patients so they normally have an inclination to go to the private sector now the government of india has actually started a program where they are closely collaborating with the private sector physicians as well and private hospitals where they are providing these drugs you know like in the public health facilities free of cost to private health facilities as well so all a physician in the private sector has to do is order a test either collect the patient sample and send it to the nearest public sector lab where it is done free of cost or send the patient refer the patient to that lab where the test will be done this test result will come to the physician and the physician can start the treatment the drugs can can also be provided free of cost to the patient all the physician has to do is ensure that the patient is taking treatment regularly the government has also put in a mechanism where if this private physician informs the government he has to notify this case on nikshe which is a web based portal where all the tb patients get notified the government staff will actually follow up with this patient that you know please take treatment regularly and the patient is also entitled to a financial incentive every month which is currently 500 rupees which is called as nikshe poshan yojana now this is to take care of the nutritional needs of this particular patient like i said you know as soon as you get tb if you are the uh, breadwinner your income stops now how do you ensure you know that you are able to meet your regular needs right and your food so the government is currently providing 500 rupees under this nikshe poshan yojana to all patients then you know there are counseling facilities as well so all this put together the patient should not actually be incurring or incurring very minimal cost you know which could be transport cost from going from home to a health facility because you know the government now actually gives uh, has the provision of giving the treatment uh, the drugs for one month to the patient and the and this can be provided you know through the asha workers closer to your residence it could be a chemist near you who could provide you with, with these drugs or a physician you know who stays close to you without additional cost so these mechanisms are there but the dis, but the only problem is that the physicians and the patient should be aware that these facilities are available these are these facilities are available and they can avail it accessibility is not an issue it is about the awareness that these facilities are about okay as we mentioned the uh, nikshe program 
so on paper like we have some really wonderful schemes but the point that is there is implementation could you please highlight that on ground level how effective this scheme has been and also last year pradhan mantri tb mukt bharat yojana was bharat abhiyan was also launched how effective has been that scheme and what more needs to be done to you know implementing to make sure these schemes are implemented effectively So, Sushmita, I'll give you some hard facts here. One, you know, the Nikshay Poshan Yojana was started somewhere in April two thousand eighteen. Till date, there have been about uh, seven, seven to eight million TB patients who have got this benefit, who have received this benefit. The government has spent over two thousand crores on Nikshay Poshan Yojana. now i will not say that you know with one of the best schemes it is working very well everyone's benefiting because there are challenges you know this scheme is actually available there is a direct beneficiary transfer which happens into the tb patients account for which you know you need to have certain uh, eligibility criteria or i would say certain documents need to be submitted for example your bank account your aadhar your telephone number now some patients you know do not have these documents available so the government also tries to you know support them through the government staff to get these documents then you know there is this problem of migration so the patient gets diagnosed in delhi he is a casual laborer or worker as soon as he gets diagnosed everyone motivates him no you should go to your village you will not get good treatment here and he goes there and he goes to the private facilities one he incurs expenditure two he is not able to you know we are not able to locate him and provide him with this uh, direct beneficiary transfer or financial incentive this could actually be a little more streamlined for example you know with the this could be linked with government's other schemes as well right so we will uh, you know what needs to be actually done is that 500 rupees may be sufficient for one type of patient it may not be sufficient for others so there are other government schemes as well you know which can take care of this patient the pradhan mantri tb mukt bharat abhiyan is another such scheme you know which was announced by the prime uh, by the prime minister and the president last year and under this you know there is a provision of nikshe mitras so who are these nikshe mitras these are people like you and me who can actually adopt a tb patient so while the government continues to provide them with free diagnostics treatment and financial incentives there are other needs the patient may have which can be provisioned you know by us you know just like we take care of you know or we donate we can actually adopt these patients and say okay you know we can provide you with a food basket we can provide you with clothes we can provide you with you know some other livelihood uh, you know uh, opportunities and the a, the objective is that there should be every tb patient should have a nikshay mitra who will act, act as a as a friend you know as a as a guide as a as a supporter and currently you know as far as i remember you know there has been significant progress and we have you know almost like 2 million nikshay mitras which are there across the country but these numbers are also small right we need more such nikshay mitras who can actually support the tb patient because like i said you know tb is not just a medical disease it's a social disease and you require a holistic approach not just drugs and diagnostics uh, as you said that you have been you know with linked with tb uh, uh, for the last 20 years so i would really like to know and i am sure our viewers would also like to know what has been the role of find in the area of people clauses and are you guys planning any upcoming initiatives so find uh, sushmita we are the global diagnostics we are a close collaborating partner with who and i mentioned to you you know two tests uh, the cbnad or gene expert test and punad these were actually validated by fine so what fine does is you know we 
actually work on various public health problems and try to solve or provide solutions for diagnostics for these public health challenges. And here, uh, what we do is that, you know, we will work with the technology partners, industry partners, give them solutions, you know, on, for example, you know, industry would actually look at a particular test from a business angle or a revenue angle. They may not have the entire information on what is the actual need on the ground. You know, what does the patient require? What does the health system require? So we provide that input. We also help them refine these tests. And then after the test has been developed, we validate it. So FIND is actually known for validating doing clinical trials globally. And we've done this for, you know, Gene Expert. We've done it for Drunat. We've done it for Line Probase, so on and so forth. And we are now working with various startups, you know, on developing more uh, diagnostics for TB and other diseases as well. After this step, you know, once the test is also available, you know, the challenge is that it should be accessible or available for use in the community or in the country. And most of the countries being low middle income or low resource, you know, they are not able to afford high price tests. So find also negotiates price and helps, you know, create models for better access to these tests by the uh, community in the field. Uh, I, there are so many questions that I would really like to ask you, but I think we are short of time. Uh, but what are some of the essential, as you said, that awareness is still not there. People still, you know, they kind of have some lethargic attitude towards the treatment regimen. What are some of the essential aspects that every TB uh, patient and their family should keep in mind? So one, the foremost thing is, you know, that patients and their families should be aware that there is a disease called TB. And if you have certain symptoms, you should get yourselves tested. Now, you know, COVID has been such a good example. You know, I would say, although, you know, it's, it's not the best example, pandemic should not happen. But what it has actually created is that if you are able to create awareness, everyone talks about PCR tests, you know, even rickshawala, you know, are aware that there is something known as an RT-PCR test. TB has been there for thousands of years. Hardly anyone, you know, you stop and you ask, what is the test for TB? They'll not be able to give you an answer. So we need to create that kind of awareness that people should realize that if I have these symptoms, I could be suffering from TB. I need to get tested and then I need to take the treatment for the required duration of time in the right doses, using the right drugs. That's it. The second important step is that the treatment, the both for diagnostic or the management of TB, both in the public sector and the private sector should be consistent. It should be uniform. Patients should not be asked to bear out-of-pocket expenditure for disease, you know, for which diagnostics and drugs are available free of cost. Third, Treat TB as a social disease. Provide all the necessary support to TB patients beyond diagnostics and drugs so that, you know, he's able to get cured and have a, you know, he can lead his life. Uh, Dr. Chakra, thank you so much for joining us. It was wonderful knowing so much from you on this topic, which is still needs to be talked about. Uh, I would love to connect with you some another time and, and do a detailed conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sushmita.